Morning, sir. There's been a, um... <clears throat> hey, what have you got there? TV. You'll have to excuse Sarah. The creative juices are flowing. Jamie, hi. I'm sorry I can't stop. I want to get this chapter finished before work. Everyone has a novel in them, apparently. Sarah's is pouring out. Yes, well, whether it's any good or not is another matter. No, I'm sure it will be. But Chicklet? No. Not really. It's a historical romance set in Georgian times. Shall we? Bye, Betty. Hello, you. Heading outside, Ronan. First up, Pat Hammond, Vale Cottage, Windsor Lane. Nice one, Mary. How are you coping? Oh, well, you know, as well as can be expected when your boss and your receptionist have both taken time off in lieu simultaneously. <sighs> OK, got visual. Nice one. Load her up. Once you've mastered drone delivery, I shall have to introduce you to classical music. Or I could do you a playlist. You always say embrace the modern. There are exceptions. 
healthcare by air. Back to you. Fast and furious. You bet. Victim female stabbed in the middle of the countryside, found by a visiting rambler, apparently. That it? No name? No. What the hell is that? It looked like a drone, but eyes on the road, please, Winter. Interesting choice of clothing. DCI Barnaby DS Winter. Petra Antonescu. I'd shake hands, but. Murder weapon? Seemingly. The pen is mightier than the sword. Cause of death, maybe stabbing to the neck. Possible puncture of the carotid artery, can't be sure yet. This is no way to kill someone. If I stab someone, I stab them with a knife or a sword. Do you often stab people? Dema. Man. Time of death? In the last two hours, uniform are searching the area, but so far, no ID, no phone, no wallet, nothing. So what's with the fancy dress? Early 1800s. Georgian. And they teach that in pathology school? I watch a lot of Jane Austen films. I'm more of an action man myself. There's this also. Meet me, I'll tell you everything you need to know about her. What's through there? Thanks. Maybe she was meeting someone here. Winter? So we've got a dead woman from the 1800s who might have been on her way to meet a 21st century druggie. Hmm. Where do we go from here? There. <sighs> a repast out of doors is so invigorating. Appeals to both eye and palate. What one might call a movable feast. That's <laughs> very good, James. Dr. Frank, we thought we'd lost you. Just getting some air. Perhaps you were practicing your quadrille and very much looking forward to it at tomorrow's dance. Actually, I'm not a great lover of dances. Not a great lover. It's disappointing. You've just shrunk in my estimation. Right, you lot. Rubber, I'm taking five. I'm so done. James? What do you think you're up to, Paul? Not now, Dad, OK? Yes. Now, Polly, we've been through this a million times. Bonnet on, legs crossed, manners. No, forget it. This lot might buy this posh nonsense, but I've just lugged the contents of a supermarket up a hill in shoes that were down a ballerina. Listen, love, think of your mum. We're trying to recreate a world here. And besides, we're paying you. Catherine? Walter. Kitty, please. Catherine, got visitors. Well, who are they? Um, vehicles aren't allowed here. They are now. You are... James Oswood. Are you missing anyone from your group, Mr. Oswood? A young woman in her 20s? Samantha Berry, yes. Why? I'm sorry to have to tell you, she's been murdered. Samantha Berry wasn't local. She lived in a flat share in East London. Away from home, next of kin? Mother, Rachel, we're trying to track her down. No trace yet of father or siblings. And the good news? Flatmate sending a recent photograph. Miss Berry was an Oxford graduate, apparently. Single and a journalist. A journalist killed with a pen? According to her employer, she wasn't covering the event for them. 
Could be a secret passion, I suppose. When did you last see Miss Berry? 8.30 at breakfast. Yeah, we believe she was on her way to meet somebody when she was killed. Any idea who that might have been? No. Gorgeous Georgians? Kitty's brainchild. Yes. We stage immersive events. Visitors come and live for a week, as they would have done in the time of Jane Austen. It's got a live element included in the week, like a, a reenactment. There's a local legend that Jane Austen passed through the village in 1801. And I'm determined that gorgeous Georgians is going to restore this house to its former glory. We're just three days into our first event, so obviously this is a bit of a disaster. Not least for Miss Berry. Of course. I didn't... I'm sorry. Might I take a look at Miss Berry's belongings? Sure. Samantha was really nice. Friendly, approachable. We had a great laugh in the pub. <laughs> I thought you weren't allowed out, Miss Everard. We met her last week when she was staying in the village. Real nosy, though. About what? Everything. The house, the village. Anyone have a problem with that? Mum snapped at her about it. She snapped when she caught her in the kitchens last night. Doing what? Sneaking back in. Said she'd been out having a cheeky fag. I thought she was top banana. I reckon His Majesty over there did too. Mind you, you can form a queue for that one. He's proper fit. <sighs> what? Girl can dream. You must have it all the time at the surgery. I'm a receptionist at his surgery. And he's everyone's Mr Dorky. Darcy? Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> so, who looks after the surgery in his absence? There are other doctors, and James's stepmum, Mary, she's a pharmacist. She runs the place. Mm. Didn't you think it was odd that Samantha wasn't on the walk? Nah, neither was Solomon. Sorry. Only joined for the picnic. And when he did, he looked a bit hot and sweaty, if you know what I mean. Did Miss Berry say um, where she heard about the event or why she came here? No, booked through the website. I know she stayed at the village pub last week. Kitty's sister Nell mentioned it. She runs the pub. And um, where do your other guests come from? Quite a few from the Jane Austen friendship circle. And the circle approves of your venture? Mostly. Mostly? The head, Gemma Christie, she's not a fan. And where might I find her? Tea room in the village. <laughs> Drone trial. The village has been granted a two-month licence to trial a drone service delivering medicine to patients. Deadly Doug got the tender. Deadly? Yeah, a school nickname. As in dead boring. Huh. They found her in the woods. Yeah. Polly just told me. Are you OK? I'm fine. I don't need my sister clucking over me. Polly, start unloading. Are you sure? I'm pretty good at clucking. OK. Well, I'm here now. Why don't I stay and give you a hand? No. Really, I've got this. Come, Grange. What are you doing ringing? It's not a good time. Can't it wait? Miss Berry was a journalist, and yet there's no mobile phone with her belongings. She would have had one. Let's do a trace. Well, do. Polly Oswood thinks there might have been something between GP Dr. Franks and the victim. I get the impression Jane Everard likes Dr. Franks as well. Love triangle. Very Jane Austen. Mm. Victim's constant questioning about the village was getting on Kitty Oswald's nerves, apparently. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, Mrs. Oswood, uh, I gather Miss Berry was rather inquisitive. Did you know she was a journalist? <sighs> Did her questions annoy you? Could have done without it. See you at the dance. Bye. My sister, she's helping me with the food and drink. We'll need background checks on the Oswoods and speak to uh, Doug Vaughan. He runs the drone delivery trial for medicines. See if he has any cameras on those drones. My fastest ever. We must be ahead of schedule, right? It's not a race. Think health and safety. Go easy. T.S. Winter. Uh, Doug Vaughan, Ronan Chow. Are we in trouble? It depends. <clears throat> Name's Samantha Berry. She was found dead in the woods near here this morning. Do you recognise her? No. Can I get on? Not yet, no. She was a journalist. Seems she was interested in your drone delivery trial. She was not the only one. We've had a lot of press interest. These trials are the first of their kind. Groundbreaking, even. Is it just medicine that you deliver? Uh, at the moment, yes, but we hope to expand. The drones you use have um, cameras attached, right? No, the ones we're using in the trial will navigate by GPS. They're much quieter, which is the main reason we got the trial. We can attach cameras to them. But there are issues around privacy, and given that this is a trial, well, we have to do everything by the book. Jane Austen came here for tea, not Whitcomb Grange. Does that matter? Absolutely. It's about being authentic. Jane actually sat in here, in this very room. Can you imagine? Everything here is rooted in research. I should know. I studied history at Magdalen College, Oxford. I thought it was pronounced maudlin. You say potato, I say potato. My point is, I do walks and talks and give lectures, whereas James and Kitty are more playing at it. They do bring Jane Austen fans to the village, though presumably not to your tea rooms, Miss Christie. It's not a competition. Hmm. What would Jane Austen have written with? Oh, a feathered quill. Goose feather, probably. I'd be fascinated to see one of those. I have one, over here. Oh, it's odd. It's disappeared. Key's still here. Does anyone else know about the key or have access to the shop? Ray Fryer at the pub. He has my spare. He sometimes drops deliveries in for me. Well, it may have been used to kill Miss Berry. Oh. You said you'd never met Samantha Berry. Correct. Then how come her signature is in your visitor's book? I don't speak to everyone that comes in. Samantha Berry? Yeah? She stayed a couple of nights last week. Did Miss Berry say why she was here? No, I didn't ask. I gather you're helping your sister out with the event. Well, as much as we can. Gorgeous Georgians, it's a great idea, isn't it? Not my cup of tea, to be honest. Oh, that period malarkey brings me out in a rash. All I can do to keep up with the present. At least this is fun. No one's asking you to join in, Ray. It's just as well. Kitty wanted to breathe life into the family home. You used to live in Whitcomb Grange. It's where me and Kitty grew up. James and Kitty bought the house back. Whereas you've gone from the Grange to the local pub. See what I've done to her. That's what happens when you're married to an ex-copper. From nicking criminals to pulling pints. There are worse things. You also help with the deliveries to the tea room. When were you last there? I took a few things round last night. Did you see anything unusual? 
I may be a bit rusty with my surveillance, but... heard of Whitcomb Grange? Yes, of course. They've got a Georgian event going on there at the moment. And a murder investigation. Well, bear that in mind. I'm off to their dance this evening. Research. Are you going to be there? Yes. A woman has been killed there and it's possible that someone is targeting the event. I don't think you should go. Oh, I'll be fine. Maybe it'll add a bit of spice and intrigue to my book. But if someone is... No bar Period dress is hired and babysitter's booked. I could order a costume for you too, if you like. Mm. And Jamie as well. It would make you less conspicuous. Oh, by the way, I meant to ask when's Cam back. Only I need some medical advice on TB. My heroine's at death's door. Well, not for another week or two, but um, Petra's covering. You could have a word with her. OK, we will do. Is she friendly? Very. The cause of death wasn't loss of blood. It was asphyxiation. I thought she was stabbed with a pen. The nib had been dipped in succinylcholine. Sucks for short. A neuromuscular drug that paralyzes the muscles, including those for breathing. A poison pen. So the killer knows their medicine. Did forensics find any prints on the pen or on the display case in the tea shop? Both wiped. Syringe likewise. The syringe had traces of morphine in it. The one that killed her sucks. Is it easy to get hold of? From pharmaceutical suppliers, yes. Hmm. Is there anything you don't know about? The local nightlife. I'm at a loose end tonight, if you want to show me. <sighs> really sorry, I'm playing five aside. DES Winter. <clears throat> There's been a break in. Nothing was stolen. So what could be on your computer that someone would want to destroy? You know, there's just details of deliveries, addresses, footage. Footage? Now, you said yesterday that the drones didn't have cameras, that they navigated by GPS. Historically, we've filmed events, weddings, all sorts. Why would someone want to destroy old footage? What do you think? That he might be lying. Check him out. I already have. He's got a criminal record. He was done for joyriding as a teenager, nicked by Ray Fryer back when he was a copper. Let's keep an eye on him. Breaking could have been staged. It could indeed. Mark every drone delivery route from yesterday morning onto a map. See if any went near the murder scene. I'll look into this drug sucks. And Dr Franks would be able to order it. Jane Everard might too. As might his pharmacist, Mary Oswood. Let me know when you're back up and running. Will do. Someone broke into Drone HQ. I think we can use it to our advantage. I'm all yours. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Inspector. I'm rushed off my feet. Please, come into the office. Do you, uh 
recognize this woman? Yes, poor thing came to see me last week to ask some questions about James and Kitty, how long they'd known each other, how they met. As James's stepmom, I wasn't really on the scene back then. Didn't you think it odd that she was asking a, a stranger to the village down from London? Not really. James and Kitty's marriage has never seemed exactly solid. Now, who knows what went on in London? Are you saying Miss Berry might have known James? I'm saying his private life is his private life. As the pharmacist, Mrs. Oswood, presumably you order the medicines. Would that include a drug called succinylcholine? I've heard of it, but I've never ordered it. Why? It was used to kill Miss Berry. Could anyone else have ordered that drug through the surgery? Only myself and Solomon. What about morphine? You order that in? Sometimes. Golden Eagle. Let's do this. May I? I'm afraid I'm busy. I've been trying to get your attention all day but you seem determined to ignore me. It's what you do to me at work. You aren't like this at work. What? Dressed in pirate costume? Is that your thing? Anyway, I'm disappointed in you. Why? Because I have to dress like a lady in order to catch your eye. A true gentleman would be able to look past my lowly receptionist status. Is that why you're here? To catch my eye? Don't flatter yourself. We're still no wiser who her is. Her uh, may not be relevant. It could be, um, oh, meet me in St. Louis and I'll tell you everything you need to know about the Titanic and all who sailed in her. Very different. Mm, not very helpful. I'm more interested in this break-in. Tell me about the map of deliveries. Well, on the assumption that the drones travel as the crow flies, these are the routes travelled yesterday morning. Samantha Berry's body was found here. No deliveries went that close. But this is where the pharmacist and her husband Walter live. Several deliveries went past there. If someone had gone from the scene of the crime back here, they might have seen a drone and been worried they were caught on camera, so targeted Ronan's laptop. There's more. Walter Oswood used to be the headmaster of the local school, retired two years ago after raising his hands against a pupil. And we're still triangulating the whereabouts of Samantha Berry's missing phone, but we traced her service provider. One call since she's been at the event, and the night before she died, a number registered to... Walter Oswood. Time to pay him a visit. Mm -hmm. I imagine you know what happened. Yes. The people who reported you, are they still in the village? No, they didn't report it. The incident was caught on a drone camera by Doug Vaughan. He was filming the school event and felt obliged to inform the authorities. Doug Vaughan reported you? Well, it was the right thing to do. I don't blame Doug or the boy. It was no one's fault but my own. I lost my temper I shouldn't have. How did your son James feel about Doug doing that? <laughs> Not great, but then James and Doug have been at war since they were boys. How well did you know Samantha Berry? You mean, did I lose my temper with her too? No, I didn't. When did you last speak to her? 
She rang me the night before last. It was odd, really. She simply wanted to know when James and Catherine started seeing each other. What time did you go to the Grange yesterday morning? 9.30. Where were you before that? Fishing. By the river. From 6 a.m. Can anyone confirm that? Yes. Solomon saw me. But he's staying at the Grange, which is nowhere near the river. No. That's as may be, but he rushed past in all his period get-up. Walter must be mistaken. His eyesight isn't exactly 2020, is it? Well, Dr. Franks, you were in period costume. He was quite clear about that. And we know that you went somewhere that morning. That's why you were late to the picnic. Yeah, I told you I went for a walk. Are you aware of succinylcholine? I've heard of it, yes. Do any of your patients use it? I'm sorry, I have to maintain patient-doctor confidentiality. What about morphine? Your pharmacist also hesitated when I mentioned morphine. We found traces of it in a syringe that was left in the folly. Do you know anything about that? Morphine is quite common. It is. Mainly used as pain relief. I suppose someone needed it medicinally, but they lost the syringe used to inject it. Well, they'd need a replacement. Well, a doctor could get a replacement from his surgery if he was quick. Or perhaps not taking the time to change his clothes or greet passers-by in order to return to his friends at a picnic. Simon, pain relief. What of it? I was in a car accident some years ago. I still have trouble with my pelvis and back. So why the secrecy? I self-medicate. It's not ideal, but it's so much easier than... It's also against GMC rules, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, I was going to dispose of the syringe after the event. When you were at the folly, did you see anyone else? No. But I thought I heard a drone. Well, I'm surprised you could make it. I thought you'd be in the middle of a barn dance or having tea and cake or something. Like I said on the phone, this is really not a good time. I don't care. You owe me an explanation. What is it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Samantha Berry was asking questions about James and Kitty Oldwood. You just don't know why. Exactly. Oh, poor woman. I mean, she comes to Midsummer, clearly in search of something meaningful to her, and then gets killed. Mm. Terrible, isn't it? I'm sorry to interrupt, but we should go. Yeah, and I should start getting ready. I'm looking forward to my do si -do. Uh, Not with me, I hope. No, with Petra. Petra? I took you up on your offer and went to the mortuary to pick her brains on TB, and... In return, she picked mine on Jamie. Anyway, she was at a loose end, so I asked her to come. Hmm. I think you've got a fan there. See you later. 
It was you, wasn't it? What was? The emails. I'm not sure I understand. What emails? What on earth could be in an email that's upset you this much? Anyway, it's good that it has, because I want to ask you a favour. In what? I wondered if you wanted to invest in my drone company to help take us to the next level. Not really, no. A hundred grand should do it. Excuse me? Oh, about these emails. Now, it's just a thought. Maybe they were sent to you by mistake. But then I suppose they could be sent to somebody else by mistake. Kitty, for example. You leave Kitty out of it. How is she? It's looking a bit edgy last time I saw her. Fragile thing. It'd be a shame if something was to happen to bring our world crashing down. You wouldn't dare. You're too much of a wimp, Deadly. You always have been. Ever since day one at school. Deadly Doug, the boy with no friends. You can't bully me anymore. And you can't tell me what to do. I won't be ignored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you think? How do I look? You'll do. You better get a move on. Can't keep Kitty waiting. Uh, Catherine, please. <laughs> Not going to the ball, ladies? No, Kitty's going to have to manage without me this evening. Gemma? Not even tempted, surely? Not at all. I shall finish this and retreat home to my books. Taking Colonel Brandon to bed again, are we? Ray, please, Captain Wentworth, surely. It's not a laughing matter. from the music, of course. Polly forgot to book the band. How can you forget to book a band? So we're going to have to make do with piped music, which is no good at all, is it? James. Are you glad we came back? Of course I am. Thank you. Aren't you? I didn't expect it to be this difficult, no. There's nothing difficult about it. We're breathing new life into this place. We're creating new memories. And we're filling the house with light and love and laughter. Are we? Exactly. You and Ray, are we? Good evening. Evening. Good evening. I'm not always sure me and Ray are me and Ray either. We're okay though, aren't we? Oh, glad you could make it. Just blending in, Mrs. Oswald. These breeches are a bit tight on the old. Um... <clears throat> they are a bit, aren't they? Mm. Any luck with the foam triangulation? Blank, I'm afraid. Samantha Berry's phone was either turned off or the battery had run down. Care for a little uh, Kelka show? That would be very nice, thank you. Uh, red wine or elder wine? Elder wine would be lovely. I'll have red. Mm -hmm. Kitty's worried about you. Oh, Kitty's always worried. Kitty opens her eyes and she's worried. Which is why we love her. Care for her and cherish her. So if you've got any kind of problem... You know what, Nell? Just back off. I don't know.
I've got another order. If we carry on like this, we'll be in Ibiza in no time. I want to see you, though. It takes two to get these corsets off. Who is she ringing? The wife phone from out there. There's no signal in the house. Ah. So when Samantha Berry made her phone call the other night to Walter, chances are this is where she made it from. Her phone and a change of clothing. Bingo. Considerable thought to your comments earlier today. Have you indeed? You were right. I should have paid you more attention earlier. I'd like to try again. Hang on, is this for real? A part of some performance you and James have cooked up? Looking good, Mr. Barnaby. Likewise. Enjoying yourself? Enormously. Petra's a much better dancer than you are. I don't doubt it. I don't see much research getting done. Nonsense. The dance, the people, even the house itself. Did you know there was a fire? A fire? Yeah. Petra pointed it out. You can tell by the shutters on the window. If you look closely, you can see where they've buckled from the intense heat. Get a dance? Uh, Beads, five aside. Take your places. Anyway, a lady's got to dance. I'd, I'd love to, but um, I'm working. So. You go for it. All part of being undercover. The depth of the pellets suggests a uh, high velocity cartridge. Thank you. Details here, please. No gun in the car. Uniform is searching the area. What do we do about our guests? Once they've made their statements, if they're not staying here, they'll be free to leave. 
So what should we do? Can we carry on? Well, that has to be your decision, Mrs Oswood. Be assured we'll be keeping a close eye on events. And it may be a chance for the murderer to reveal themselves. Miss Christie, what were you doing at an event you boycotted? I couldn't stay away. I wanted to see the dresses. I had to watch the dances. They did it all wrong, of course. You almost ran over one of my officers. I didn't mean to. I heard the shotgun. Everyone panicked. I thought they might see me. Sorry. Did you see anyone with a gun? Take her to the station and get her fingerprint. The station? Oh, do I have to? Someone might find out. It's a risk you'll have to take. But I'd never do anything criminal. We need to dig a little deeper into Miss Christie. She may or may not have fired that gun, but either way, it doesn't rule her out of killing Samantha Berry. Dad? Are you okay? Go to bed, Paul. Dad, what's going on? Sorry we came back, love. Night. Are you okay? Yeah, just about. Certainly wasn't what I was expecting. Do you think that gunshot was attempted murder? Well, not necessarily, yeah. I suspect it was a warning. Who to? I'm not sure yet. I must look into that fire that you discovered. Oh, you think it's connected? Mm, could be. I can't imagine that any of this was particularly inspiring for your writing. <sighs> no. Although the uh, unexpected nature of events did get me thinking. In what way? That maybe I'm trying to force my romantic leads together instead of just letting it happen organically. In real life, as we just witnessed, is it's rather messier, it's more unpredictable. Unfortunately. It's like Jamie and Petra. What about them? Well, why isn't Jamie interested in Petra? On paper, they should be perfect for each other. But romance just isn't like that, is it? Maybe I need to inject something else into it. How about poison? A few locations to choose from today. Uniform found the shotgun discarded in the woods near where I bumped into Gemma Christie. Petra's checking it for prints. The tech team accessed these on Samantha Berry's phone. They're snaps taken of a photo album. Possibly the Oswalds. Who's that with Nell and Kitty? And why was Samantha so interested in the fire? We need to know when it happened. 28 years ago. Yeah. Well, thanks. A local man by the name of Johnny Fullerton went down for 12 years. One and the same. Mm. 12 years for arson. And involuntary manslaughter. A housekeeper was killed in the fire. Annie Ingham. 
Fullerton confessed. Says he didn't mean to hurt anyone, he just had a grudge against the family. A grudge because? He thought they were above themselves. Clearly didn't think so then. Where's Fullerton now? Died a couple of months ago. What if it's not her at all? What if it's a word ending in H-E-R? Meet me, I'll tell you everything you need to know about... Brother? Father? Talk to Samantha Berry's mother. Ask her whether her daughter had any connection to either Annie Ingham or Johnny Fullerton. Someone getting married? the climax of our event. I need to ask about the uh, fire that happened here. Did Samantha Berry ask about it? Or about Annie Ingham? No, why on earth would she? What about Johnny Fullerton? What about him? How well did you know him? Not very well. He was the bad lad troublemaker. There's a picture of him in one of the photograph albums in your living room. Is there? Why would you keep a photograph of someone who set fire to your house? But those albums were Mum and Dad's. No one's looked at them for decades. Samantha Berry did. Sir. For me, it's for the others. But you're not meant to. It blows everything. I like coming back hasn't blown everything already. You charge a fee, I take it. What if we do? Oh. I told you. I won't be ignored. You've made your point. That's the most I can get in one go. I can get you the rest in instalments. It's a bit old-fashioned, isn't it? Don't you city boys know about electronic transfer? I don't want Kitty ever to know. Well, for a man in your situation, your warped loyalty to your wife is kind of surprising. Don't push it. And don't think this is the end of it. Social call, was it? Business. James is investing in the future. He's going to be my chief backer. Uh, can I help? It's Ronan we're here to see. Ah, of course. We want to know about any uh, unofficial drone activities you might be engaged in. There aren't any. Really? We know about the contraband you've been delivering to the Grange. Ronan, any other drone activities you want to tell us about? How about the drone that was flying about in the vicinity when Samantha Berry was murdered? From the list you gave us, there were no deliveries that should have gone anywhere near the folly. That's right. Unless that was the drone that you lent to Ray Fryer. Could he have flown it? I don't think so. What is it with you and him? We're friends. Touching. Given that he arrested you for joyriding a few years ago. That's why we're mates. He stood by me. I was in danger of going off the rails. He made sure I didn't. So, could Ray have been flying that drone? No. It, it, it was me. James Oswood asked me to do some filming for him. 
James Oswood. What are you doing filming for that idiot? You can't do that. You work for me. So there was a camera attached. What did you film? James wants some footage of the Austin event that can be used on their website. I thought I'd get some shots of the house. I came across that woman walking through the fields. I thought it looked good, so I followed her. Go on. I lost her in the woods. When I found her again, she was dead. Where is the footage now? <laughs> it was trashed in the break-in. Mr Chow, you're in enough trouble already. If I were you, I'd tell us everything you saw. I caught a glimpse of a blue anorak with the logo of a unicorn. I thought it was raised, but I didn't want to drop him in it. So I have a blue anorak? Ronin's not to know, but there are dozens of those anoraks around here. The church organised a sponsored walk for a kids' charity. The Unicorn Charity, that's their logo. Then I'll need a list of anyone you know that has Winter. one. The night before she was killed, Samantha Berry left the Grange. Did she come here by any chance? I wasn't here that night. No? Not that I saw. Where were you? A uh, night off. A few bevies at the golf club. We can check. You can indeed. Oh, um, one other thing. Johnny Fullerton, how well did you know him? Well, I, I didn't, really. Gemma Christie. She's been lying to us all along. I cannot believe that you would betray me with James Oswood, of all the people. What's it to you? You were schmoozing with him earlier. What was that all about? That is none of your business. The point is, I gave you a chance. I took you on when no one else would. You only took me on because Ray twisted your arm. I taught you everything you know. Yeah, well, all good things come to an end and all that. Because I'm not hanging about. Me and Polly are going travelling soon. Polly Oswood? What's it to you? It was you, wasn't it? Thank you for your visit to the station last night. Shh, please. I don't want anyone to know. Miss Christie, we checked. You didn't go to Oxford University. Small oversight. Don't tell anyone, will you? That's what you're worried about, isn't it? People knowing you're not what you say you are. Imagine the shame. Matters to you, doesn't it? Of course. Did Samantha Berry rumble you too? Did you mention Oxford to her, a student there? Did she say she was going to tell people? She just asked me lots of questions I couldn't answer. Made me feel foolish and embarrassed, but that was all. Because you'd never do anything criminal. No, I got it wrong before. There's something I missed, Paul, but I've figured it out now. Yeah, I'll let you know when we get back.
I know who killed her. Penetrating stab wound. Angle unusual. Essentially vertical. It was a vicious blow. Not sure there was a blow. Ah, I see. It dropped from above. With precision. A drone. What about inside? Nothing stolen or damaged. Hardly appropriate, is it, under the circumstances? On the contrary, we have been broken into. Ronan has been murdered. A campaign has been launched against us. A campaign? An anonymous online protest page pointing out that it is illegal for drones to fly too close to anyone without permission. Why is that a problem, unless you have been breaking the law? There appears to be photographs proving that our drones went closer to people than 50 metres. Didn't Ronan know not to do that? He was a speed freak when I met him, and I thought I'd ironed it out of him, but maybe not. So you had two reasons to be angry with Ronan. One, he was filming for James Oswood behind your back, and two, he risked jeopardising your trial. What is your point, Inspector? Did the two of you argue after we left this morning? We might have had a few words. And you're clearly au fait with operating drones. Anyone with practice can operate with precision. My officers will need to search your house and examine each and every drone. Speak to Mary Oswood. She must have had contact with Ronan Chow this morning. This campaign, Gemma Christie had photographs of drones on her counter. See what you can find out. I'll check on the drone that Ray Fryer borrowed. Is your husband here, Mrs Fryer? He's gone out. I'm not sure where. Ronan Chow was murdered this morning. That's terrible. The drone your husband had, do you know where it is? Yes. It's... Um... Well, it, it was here, but... If you could tell your husband I need to speak to him as a matter of urgency. Of course. Just going. Oh, don't go on my account. In fact, I'd like a word with both of you. Before the drone trials, how did the surgery deliver its medicine? We ran a home delivery service. Who did the drop-offs? Nell Fryer used to do it for me until the pub got too busy for her. Who took over then? I did, as a sideline from the tea rooms. I delivered them on my bicycle. Neither of you are fans of the drone trial, are you? Well, it's not our place to say. It's just my job to make it work. But are you? And there's a campaign against the trial. And you had photographs of the drones in action on your counter. The campaign website has similar photographs. And it seems someone knew the route Ronin was taking. Perhaps you gave them to Gemma. Underhand at best. Some might even say criminal. It is not. We're not the ones breaking the law. They are. <gasps> oh, sorry. I didn't ask to lead this trial. It risks damaging the fabric of village life. The system was better before. Much more personal. And you've gone to great lengths to undermine it. I'm not ashamed of that. Would you go further, I wonder? Ronin Chow was murdered this morning by a drone. Perhaps your opposition to the drone trial extends to Ronin. 
We're against the trial, not Ronan. When did you last see Ronan? He snuck out this morning. I was speaking to him when he... What did he say exactly? That he'd got it wrong before. That he knew who the killer was. And then the phone went dead. What do you want? To help? I know how complicated first love can be. I'll leave you. Is your husband here? Yes, he's downstairs, I think. He's... I gather you had Ronan Chow doing some filming for your website. Did your wife know? No. Drones are hardly Georgian, are they? Does your wife know about your investment in Doug Vaughan's company? What? That's not possible, we really? Dad. We checked his finances. Did you know that his company was in trouble? Why invest in a failing company? It doesn't make sense. That's exactly the time to invest. I have every faith Doug will turn it round. I've bought in cheap and I hope to reap the rewards further down the line. Backing someone who your father tells me you've never got on with. Winter. What was that all about at school? That was nothing. Oh, easy for you to say, son. It was the bane of my life. Doug was chippy. Oh, a star pupil, but a loner and a moaner. Thought we didn't appreciate his skills. Which is why he screwed Dad over. Oh, don't, James. It's true. That's why he notified the authorities. I reckon he put the boy up to goading you as well. So the question remains, why invest in him? Petra found a print in the residue on the shotgun. Doug Vaughan's. Uh, one thing before we go, the photograph albums over there, whose are they? Kitties. Hmm. Where are we at on Johnny Fullerton? We well, got confirmation that he's Samantha Berry's father. I spoke to her mother. She hasn't seen him since he went to prison. She cut him out completely. What about her daughter? Never met him until recently. A few months ago, Samantha received a letter out of the blue. Old enough to decide for herself, she met him once, just before he died. But what did he tell her? And why did it make her come to the village? And could it have something to do with Doug Vaughan firing off a shotgun? What's going on? You said you were cool and then a few hours later you turned your back on me. This is some kind of game for you. Something happened. What? Doug. Promise me you won't do anything. Hear about this? What's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with me. It's you. Look. Why are you doing this? To get money from James. And to bury him. You stop. Or you'll regret it. I'm just getting started. What are you doing? I'm sharing. Don't you dare! <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 
I need to see my wife. You've seen what he sent to her. You can go for now, but I will have to ask you some questions. How long have you been filming James Oswood? Ever since he came back, whenever I could. Sending private images of Ray Fryer and James Oswood to people is harassment. You will be charged, as you will, for discharging a firearm last night at the Grange and for blackmail. Is this all because of some schoolboy vendetta trying to get back at James in any way possible? In any way possible. Look, all I wanted was some payback for every time he ridiculed me. Deadly this and deadly that. He could do anything he wanted because he knew his daddy wouldn't see it. Do you know what it's like to be humiliated every day? To dread school? But given that you invaded his privacy, extorted money from him, and perhaps goaded his father into losing his job, you might have killed Samantha Berry to sabotage his new business. And we know that you were angry with Ronan. Ronan Chow told Polly he'd got it wrong. What did he mean? And what made him realise his mistake? Check Doug Vaughan's computer, see what you can find. I'll speak to Ray Fryer. you as much as I can. Spare me. I always knew something wasn't right. I just didn't want to confront it. Was it just James? Just James. I'm sorry. Everything all right? Not really. Whatever it is, son, I'm always here for you. Miss Everard, as mentioned, my behavior here has fallen short elsewhere too. But if you will allow me the honour. Looking forward to this. Would you be so kind as to consider giving me your hand in marriage? Is a pay rise possible? Hey, don't don't push it. <laughs> the offer won't last forever. Oh, all right then. I will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Marvellous. Right, moving swiftly on to the nuptials. Can we stop all this? Well, don't be ridiculous. We've got a wedding to host. No, then... we need to talk. You... I have to tell you something. The drone. Where is it? Someone must have taken it. The night before Samantha Berry died, we checked with the golf club. They said that you popped in briefly and then left. Where did you go? To stand outside the Grange, hoping to see James. And this morning, before you went to confront Doug Vaughan? I was with James. That's when he told me Doug knew about us. Did Samantha Berry or Ronan Chow know? Even though you were close to Ronan, although he did briefly suspect you of murder, didn't he? He was mistaken. I told you. Did your involvement with James start before or after the fire? It was a couple of years later. After Nell and Kitty had moved out of the Grange, um, Nell was away nursing, but me, James and Kitty saw a lot of each other. How long did your affair last? Until Kitty got pregnant with Polly. James decided to do the honourable thing, and that's why they left for London. And I, I got on with my life. And me and Nell got together. We were both missing someone. Everything was fine until James came back. Hey. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, of course. I'll be right there. Bye. Kitty needs me at the Grange. What can you tell me about Johnny Fullerton? Mr. Fryer, this is a murder investigation. I've had enough of secrets. When Johnny came out of prison, he came back to see if Kitty was still here. He was still in love with her. They were inseparable before the fire. Does Kitty know that Johnny came looking for her? Nell told him Kitty was with James and had moved on. Nell thought it was best not to tell her. She knows nothing about Johnny. Or me and James. So I think I found something. Okay, good work, Winter. Meet me at the Grange as soon as you can. You need to come with me. Kitty, I'm here. He's just told me everything. Did you know? I just found out. I can't believe it. Here. Thank you. So you're telling me that our whole marriage was fake? I tried so hard, Kitty, to make it work. That's not good enough. I bought into you. You bought into me? What does that mean? I believed you. I went to London with you. I could have stayed here. I'm sorry. I can't help it that I'm in love with someone else. Did you ever love me? Kitty!
Kitty, stop it. Kitty, no, no. Show me the photo. Also, Ronin Chow's phone records. 20 minutes before he rang Polly Oswood, he made one other call. Kitty, no. I want the truth. Is that why you came back here, because of Ray? You made us come back. Why would you do that? Because of first love, wasn't it? Put the torch down, Mrs Oswood. Johnny Fullerton was your first love, wasn't he? First love, last love, and everything in between. I was hoping he'd come back for me. That's why you kept his photograph? Yes. Johnny went to prison for me. I started the fire. The torch, Mrs Oswood? We were young and we were in love. But Johnny was seeing somebody else. He didn't love her, he loved me. He'd gone to break it off with her, but I didn't know that. I felt insecure. I thought he was... Mum and Dad and Nell were out. I got drunk and I was crying and I knocked over an electric heater. It caught the curtains and I ran out in a panic. I didn't think Annie was in. So why would this Johnny say he started the fire? Because he loved me and he knew Kitty wouldn't cope in prison. She wouldn't have survived. So your bad boy troublemaker was nothing of the sort? Did you know Samantha Berry was Johnny's daughter? I didn't think so. Samantha only met him once a few months ago, just before Johnny died. Johnny told Samantha about the fire, didn't he now? But he didn't tell her who started it. She wanted to know, so she came here. She found a photograph of the three of you and she came to confront you, didn't she? And that's when you realised you had to silence her. This is ridiculous. What are you suggesting? That you used your husband's key to the tea room to get a quill pen, throwing suspicion on Gemma Christie. And your nursing background to apply the poison to the nib. Ronin realised it was you wearing your husband's anorak, didn't he? said, there are loads of them. Ronan was about to tell us, wasn't he? And you couldn't allow that. Mr Fryer, would you tell Kitty what you just told me? Ray, no. Johnny did come back for you. When? After he was released from prison. And Nell didn't tell you. you tell me something like that? You were settled, you'd moved on, you were married, you had a family. But I wasn't happy. It was Johnny. What, why would you do that? I had to. It was better left. What were you to say? I was protecting you. I did what I thought was right for you. Johnny's daughter, she wouldn't leave it. She said she was going to get the truth out of you. I couldn't have that. She was going to tell you who she was, that Johnny had died. You'd have had another breakdown. I sent her a note saying to meet me. I had no choice. No. No, how dare you talk to me about Joyce? 
could have been happy. Please. I'm sorry. Please. I should have confessed the fire all those years ago. And you should have let him back into my life. And I will never forgive you for that. <laughs> Can I confess something? Not another confession, surely. I've never read any, Jane Austen. Is this what happens in them? Uh, not really, no. That said, they do often end with a wedding, or sometimes two. Not sure that would happen in a Jane Austen novel, though. So what are you going to do about the writing, then? I decided you were right. I'm going to turn it into a murder mystery. Oh, that's all I need. I might even base the hero on you. So where's Jamie? Uh, he was going to have a drink with Petra, and then he changed his mind. Did he say why? No, and I've no idea. I leave the romance to you. I think he's still interested in Cam. So is he joining us? He's, um, experimenting. That boy will go far. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 